cope. So it's all about how you feel, how well you can cope, the people around you. Also, the impact, it may bring about fear and confusion, even shock for some people. Anger and resentment can set in. People become angry with doctors, family, friends, even God. How it affects your ADL, the challenges that you have to face each day to do simple things like combing your hair, brushing your teeth, chewing your meal, these, those can become a burden. And also your self-image and your mental health, the way in which you know the individual might identify themselves with the illness and the symptoms will definitely influence adjustments to the condition. Okay, I'm gonna talk about drug therapy. There are two groups of drugs, CHE inhibitors and immunosuppressants. CHE inhibitors enhance neuromuscular impulse remission by preventing the decrease of ACH by the enzyme CHE. Drug of choice is mestinone. You wanna administer with a small amount of food to help alleviate GI side effects. You also want to instruct to eat meals 45 minutes to one hour after taking CHE inhibitors to avoid aspiration. Sudden increase in weakness and inability to clear secretions, swallow or, or breathe may indicate crisis. So there are two crises, um, myasthenic crisis, which is an um, exacerbation of the myasthenic symptoms caused by not enough CHE inhibitor drugs. Um, there's also cholinergic crisis, which is an acute exacerbation of muscle weakness caused by too many CHE inhibitor drugs. In myasthenic crisis, you're gonna see increased pulse and aspiration, increased blood pressure, anoxia, cyanosis, bowel and bladder incontinence, decreased urine output, um, absence of cough and swallow reflex. In cholinergic crisis, you're gonna see nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, abdominal cramps, blurred vision, pallor, facial muscle twitching, um, and hypotension. Emergency care for myasthenic crisis, you wanna maintain adequate respir uh, respiratory function. Um, CHE inhibitor drugs are withheld because they increase respir uh, respiratory secretions. Drug therapy is restarted gradually and at lower dosages. Emergency care for cholinergic crisis, um, you wouldn't wanna give a CHE um, inhibitor drug while patient is maintained with mechanical ventilation. You wanna give atropine one milligram IV. Immunosuppression may be accomplished with the use of corticosteroids or chemotherapeutic agents. Prednisone is given initially to, um, to produce remission and to control and improve symptoms. The drug is tapered over a period of weeks to months. Surgical management, patients may get, um, may get a thymectomy, which is the removal of the thymus glands. Pre-op, um, immediately before surgery, Mestinol may be given with a small amount of water to keep patients stable during and after surgery. Plasmapheresis may be used before and after surgery to decrease circulating antibi antibiotics more quickly. Post-op special attention is to pulmonary hygiene. Suctioning is performed. You also want to observe the signs of pneumothorax or hemothorax such as chest pain, sudden shortness of breath, <coughs> diminished chest wall expansion, and diminished breath sounds. Okay, so um, we set up a care, uh, care plan with three important diagnoses, the expected outcomes and goals, and the teaching and intervention. The first diagnosis would be impaired gas exchange related to ineffective breathing patterns and muscle weakness. The expected outcome would be pulse oximetry reading will be maintained at 90% or above. The teaching in regards to that is, as a nurse, you will assess the respiratory rate, depth, and breath sounds, and monitor pulmonary functions um, at the best that, at the um, tidal volume, vital capacity, and inspiratory force. Um, you will provide chest physiotherapy for postural drainage, 
given to a mobilized patron. Uh, you can encourage deep breathing uh, as tolerated. Always keep a manual resuscitation bag at hand and also suction should be available at the home. Oh, and since the muscles of swallowing will be stronger in the morning, you can teach the patient to increase caloric intake for breakfast. The second diagnosis would be risk for aspiration related to difficulty swallowing. The expected outcome, no aspiration will occur. The teaching intervention in regards to aspiration, meal times should coincide with the peak effect of anticholinesterase anti medication. The patient is taught to sit upright during meal and keep the neck slightly flexed to facilitate swallowing. Soft food can be swallowed easily. If needed, supplemental feeding um, are, needed, are needed if the nutritional status of the patient is not adequate. Um, the third diagnosis would be fatigue related to increased energy needs from muscle involve, muscular involvement. Um, the expected outcome, will, the patient will verbalize decreasing fatigue performing activities of daily living. The patient is taught regarding the strategies to conserve energy, help the patient to identify the optimal levels of energy and rest hours during the day. You want to plan all activities to allow rest periods and conserve energy. Um, some diet teaching. Um, you can teach the patient to eat more fruits. Well, of course, you know, maintain a um, balanced diet. Eat more fruits and vegetables. Eliminate polyunsaturated vegetables like um, such as sweet spice foods because this can be aggravating to the condition. You can teach, um, oh, so anticholinesterase medication can, some side effects can cause cramping and diarrhea. So in that case, you want to teach the patient to include a, like a breast diet, bread, applesauce, bananas, um, toast, so once it's tolerated. Um, and steroid use can cause fluid retention, so it's important to reduce sodium. It is important to teach to reduce sodium and increase potassium in the diet, and you could use salt substitutes. Also, avoid coffee, teas, and chocolate because they can be they contain the stimulant um, stimulant caffeine, making the diarrhea worse. Other things to teach, avoid large crowds, expose, expose you to any kind of infection, including cold and flu, vaccinate against common infections such as influenza. Some drugs commonly prescribed for other problems such as infections, heart disease, or hypertension may make myasthenic gravis worse, so you can teach alternative therapies um, because autoimmune disease tends to flare up in response to um, emotional up and down. You could, you could teach uh, psychotherapy, biofeedback, guided imagery, they're a good option. And you can consult a practitioner for homeopathy. Any questions? Any questions? I have a question. Yeah. What concept is that under? Immunity. Immunity. So nobody decide to even touch on immunity. Y'all just going for the kill, right? Take that for a note. Okay? Your presentation was good, but Learn to tie it in to what the concept is. I wrote it on the paper for a specific reason. Okay? Nobody got any questions? So, um, I have a question. So, if, uh, let's say, your eyelids are affected, does that also affect your um, eyes movement? Do, will the patient have difficulty looking peripherally or so? Well, they say that you can also, I'm sorry, you can also, like, I guess when you're in um, the hospital, you can, I think I read, you can tie down the, um, not tie down, but tape yeah. the, the eyelids so that they don't um, actually. Yes. Yeah. So if you would do that, would you have to um, administer some kind of um, uh, artificial uh, ears or so? Their facial, they can't like do the gazing mm -hmm. right. because they have this flat 
Okay. Very nice job. Thank you.